Inward Voyage, a tale of initiation. And Jason's first test was on the island of Lemnos. As they approached the island, the Argonauts realized with alarm that a host of warriors had come out to meet them. To their surprise, though, they soon discovered that the warriors were women. Their queen, Hypsipile, was the first to speak, blushing in a most unwarlike fashion. Stranger, she said to Jason, do not be afraid. We are unprotected. We have lost all our men. And she told Jason how the women of Lemnos had been cursed by the goddess of love, and how, as a result, all their men had abandoned them for other women and left the island. So, she continued, we invite you all to stay here with us, and if the prospect pleases you, to come to our beds. Of course, it sounds like another fairy story, but the tale of the Lemnian women was already well known to Homer in the 8th century BC. The place where it happened, Bronze Age Lemnos, was the earliest town in Europe, and strangely enough, it imported metals from the Black Sea coast on the way to Colchis, the land of the Golden Fleece. Astonishing to think that uh, Polyochne was founded in the 5th millennium BC, that's before the pyramids, before Stonehenge. It was the most advanced Neolithic culture in the Aegean Sea, and in a volcanic island, it was a metalworking place. Homer calls it smoke-shrouded Lemnos, and it lasts all the way through to the Trojan War. So this was the Lemnos of the Greek myths. This was the town that the Argonauts came to in the story and the place where the Lemnian women received them. But the Lemnian women, don't forget, had been cursed by the goddess of love. She'd given them a stink so foul that they repelled all men. Now where did that weird tale come from? Well, the women in Bronze Age Lemnos were skilled in dyeing cloth. They used a dye made from the glands of a sea snail mixed with human urine. It produces the richest colour and the worst stink on earth. A clue to a Bronze Age reality behind the tale? By making love to the women, the Argonauts broke the curse. You are all the children of the yeah, Argonauts. Yes, that one after this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But the women of Lemnos had a dark secret. What they hadn't told Jason was that they'd murdered all their men. Got them drunk one night, stuffed them in sacks, and thrown them into the sea. Ah. So this is the cliff. Oui. <laughs> <laughs> Place where they Pe threw them off. Petaxa, petaxa, a Greek. Petaxa. Throw. Petai, throw. Throw. Wow. <laughs> so the name of the cliff preserves the legend. Petaxa yeah, is pe to throw petaxa. in Greek. This in the legend is the place where the uh, Lemnian women threw them off the cliff into the sea. As so often in Greek myths, the fairy tale turns out to be strange and cruel. Queen Ipsipili fell in love with Jason and asked him to stay and see his sons grow up. But Jason was a hero on a quest, and he had to go on. So we've had high winds for the last two days and we couldn't get off uh, the island, but the ferries finally arrived. In the Bronze Age, the Age of Heroes, 
The name of the month of May, Ploistio, meant the time when sailing began. In winter, it was best to stay in harbour. Even today, few Greeks, unless they have to, venture out of season across the wine-dark sea. Jason's quest, I'm sure, was a summer voyage. He wouldn't risk the wrath of Poseidon, the god of the sea. But as insurance, Jason landed at the island of Samothrace, home of the mysterious great gods, to get their magic protection before passing beyond the limits of the known. To reach the Black Sea, the Argonauts now needed to navigate the fierce currents pouring out of the great ocean through the Bosphorus. Turkish city, Istanbul has always been the crossroads between Europe and Asia. It was founded by the Greeks around 700 BC. In one version of the legend, it was Jason himself who built the first shrine on this spot. The beginning of one of the great colonizing adventures in history, which opened up the Black Sea and southern Russia to Greek civilization. This was uh, built in the middle of the 6th century and for nearly a thousand years was the main church of the Greek Orthodox world, um, the centre of the Greek Christian world that succeeded the, the world of the ancients. But in the myth, all that is a dream of the future. For Jason, the Straits of the Bosphorus were guarded by a terrifying obstacle that crushed all ships trying to pass. The clashing rocks. Only one man knew the secret of how to sail through. Phineas the seer, who'd been blinded by the gods for telling too much of the future. Listen, Jason, said Phineas. About your destiny, I can only reveal what the gods permit. For Zeus, the king of the gods, wills it that humanity shall never see all of heaven's design. But for the clashing rocks, as you approach the cliffs, release a dove to fly on ahead. The rocks will clash shut. As they reopen, you must seize your chance and row through with all your might. But sir, said Jason, Will we get safely back to Greece? That's what we want to know. My son, said the old man, I can say no more. But remember this, your best ally is Aphrodite, the goddess of love. The success of your quest depends on her. Ask me no more. So Jason was the first sailor ever to pass the straits into the new world of the Black Sea. So once the Argo whooshed through between the clashing rocks, they stayed open forever. And that's them, according to the story. The landmark at the end of the Bosphorus. And ahead of them, for the first time for any Greek, according to the legend, 
There was open sea, a bare horizon. Glory, your fire inflames men's souls, says a Roman poem on Jason. You are the siren song that drives men to risk their all. But are they heroes or mere dreamers? The Golden Fleece is a present first of all, of God to the Greeks. It is a way of traveling to this new world, which is rich in metals and in the knowledge of working the metals. So you think they actually got, the, got into the Black Sea even in the, the late Bronze Age, even in the Age of Heroes. Of course. But the root story comes from this. Of course. Is there a real journey behind it at some point? Hundreds of journeys. Hundreds of journeys during the, the late prehistoric, the late Bronze Age, trying to, to get through the Bosphorus into the Black Sea because this was the richest part of the world. So it's a kind of El Dorado for, for of these course, early peoples. Of yeah. And all these sagas and all these tales and all these poems and all these tragedies and all this money, <laughs> richness, wealth. Yeah. They are wealthy people. Yeah. Wealthy people. Yeah. Uh, I think that finally became one story. Okay. Jason. Yeah. Jason's journey along the Black Sea coast is a mix of real geography and fantasy. The Argonauts pass Amazons and fight off arrow-shooting birds. But on the way, you can still find traces of what seems like a real voyage. At one point, Jason lands in what sounds like an ancient industrial estate. The land of the Iron People. This is uh, where experimental archaeology comes in. OK. I brought with me a magnet. <laughs> Isn't that great? There you are. Um, they did work iron here. In fact, the, uh, the old metal workings are everywhere in the back of these hills. It's led many people to think that maybe this part of the story doesn't come from the Bronze Age, of course, but from the Iron Age. It just goes to show you how many layers go into a legend. That night, we camped at a place the Turks still call Cape Jason, just as the ancients did. And here, the locals have a great twist to the story. This, they say, is as far as Jason got, because the Argo sank here, and Jason and his brothers settled down and married local girls. <laughs> There were three ancient Greek brothers who were called Yason, which is Jason, um, Gerson, and Samson. And Yason stayed here. Gerson, am, am I right? Yes. Samson, back at the city of Samson down there. So it's the local legend is a kind of tale of colonization. Isn't that interesting? Really amazing. Civilizations rise and fall, religions change, but not the human imagination, which hands on the gifts of the past 
almost like a genetic code. In the abandoned Greek monastery of Sumela, there's a sacred cave. Cole, come and look at this. Isn't that sensational? Here you can see the Christian world which overpainted Jason's pagan universe. But they still share the same myths. The divine woman, the supernatural powers, and the heroes. You can see Jonah and the whale looking very like Jason being delivered from the dragon, isn't he? <laughs> the hero's task is still to enter the realm of death. The saints, the heroes. <laughs> and by his courage and steadfastness gain everlasting fame. It makes you realise that all the great myths of humanity, the story of Jason and the Golden Fleece included, are really about the conflict between good and evil and facing up to death. Just before the Georgian border, I stumbled on a bull festival straight out of Jason's world. You think of all those Greek